Hey, good morning, uh, City Lashes. Uh, so cool to be able to spend some time with you again this morning. Sucks to be stuck at home um, and recording for you like this, but um, it really is great that we can still continue to connect in this way, uh, to worship together, uh, even to pray together. I hope you were able to join us as part of the prayer time on Wednesday evening where we connected internationally nations praying with other nations for nations uh, was such a cool prayer time uh, you can look for it on the this facebook group actually i'm sure you'll find a recording of it you can pray into those same uh, subjects that we touched on this past wednesday and remember to join us on wednesday evening uh, for prayer time it really is cool to be able to pray together but it's also cool to be able to just get into god's word together and enjoy some seed from Father God today, um, and we trust that seed will take root in our hearts, um, just as Jesus spoke of that parable um, of the seeds that none of it's going to be snatched away today, uh, or taken away by, or drowned out by worries, or the deceitfulness of wealth, or any of those things that Jesus spoke of, but that uh, the root would just take deep root within our hearts, or the seed would take deep root within our hearts and grow into something beautiful that the Creator has intended uh, for us. Uh, thanks again as well to Donnie and Ronell um, just for facilitating this way of connecting for us. I know it's difficult during all the different levels of lockdown to get this right. Um, but yeah, to Donnie and Ronell, to Alex and Ansela who continue to be faithful um, as part of the broadcast team um, over this past while. They've been training up guys like Arnold and Leal and others that have been supporting behind the scenes. Man, thank you so much to each one of you for your investment in the kingdom. We just pray God's blessing over you guys, His protection um, over each of your lives. Um, and just say thank you so much for the investment that you've made in His kingdom. Right, so cool to be with you this morning, to be able to share uh, the word with you. Can I encourage all of you today? You're a carrier. Uh, the big question for me as we put up this title slide around hope is, hey, if we're carriers and we are carriers, is what we're carrying worth catching uh, in a world that's just overwhelmed with a focus on who's carrying what at the moment? Probably something to make sure uh, we've got right within our own hearts this morning, right? So God uh, gave me this word of, of hope for the year. Someone sent me this picture that I think you would have seen on the slide, kind of 2020 and hope intertwined. Um, and we're all infectious, as I say. Um, for some of us, we're infectious with fear. For others of us, as we heard last week through Donnie's preach, we'd hope to be infect infectious with our faith rather than um, our fear. And Rather than those around us going, oh no, I've been exposed to so-and-so again. It would actually be, wow, I can't wait to be exposed to so-and-so again uh, because of just the amazing just hope, faith, belief and trust in God that just permeates from every cell in their body. So the question for us today is what we're carrying worth catching? Uh, and Paul writes to the Thessalonians, they've been persecuted for some time, they're facing all sorts of trials. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, uh, in verse 2, he says, We always thank God for all of you, and we pray for you constantly as we pray to our God and we ask our Father about you. We think of your faithful work. Hey, we're celebrating some faithful work this morning. Thanks to uh, all of you that have been so faithfully involved in God's kingdom. Your faithful work, your loving deeds. How many of you know in a season like this, there's an opportunity for us to be loving in our deeds and the enduring hope you have because of our Lord Jesus Christ. Whenever we think of you, we think faithful work, loving deeds, enduring hope. Faithful work, loving deeds, enduring hope. I love that. So cool to be known as a people like that this morning. Amen. So today we're going to focus on Mark chapter 5. You can actually start turning there if you're following along um, in your own Bible. Uh, otherwise, we'll try and put some slides up for you. But in Mark chapter 5, and it's really just such a chapter on hope, uh, confident expectation that something good is coming. That's actually uh, the descriptor of the word hope. I love that. 
confident expectation that something good is coming. Paul spoke to the Thessalonians of an enduring hope. That stands the test of time, right? Enduring, constant expectation that something good is coming. Sure, Lord, help me, help me with that, I pray. That'll be just amazing to get right in our lives, right? This constant, enduring, confident expectation that something good is coming. Give me more hope in you, Lord, I pray. No more fear, no more anxiety, no more anguish, no more doubt, no more concern, but hope, an enduring hope, an enduringly constant expectation that good is coming. Good is coming, church. I hope you hear that this morning. Right, so in Mark chapter 5, and please read the whole chapter when you've got a gap. We're not going to have time to do that today. Some of you go, oh, I know, I know. But read it. Read it on your own. You've got time. And sure, the world needs hope right now. So soak all of it up that you can. But here's three quick stories in Mark uh, chapter 5 as we stir up hope this morning. The first one. Mark chapter 5, and it's from 1 to 20 in that chapter, Jesus actually restores this demon-possessed man. And they went across the lake to the region of the Gerasenes, it says in verse 1, when Jesus got out of the boat, a man with an impure spirit came from the tombs to meet him. Man, I love that. I'm not going to read all of these verses for you now, but here's a guy who you couldn't really get close to, if you remember the story. He cut himself. Uh, they tried to change him. He broke the chain. He wailed at the tombs at night. Scary dude, man. Um, the people in the town were completely hopeless. They tried everything. And this guy just got around everything that they tried. Uh, how many of you maybe feel today like you've tried everything and your situation remains hopeless and nothing that you're trying on your own seems to be working out? What about the man himself? Uh, The Bible doesn't share with us much of his state of mind, except that he seems to be completely crazy because of this legion of demons that have taken hold within him. I'm sure he's pretty hopeless as well. He's an outcast. Everyone is scared of him. He's harming himself, not just those around him, but himself. Maybe that's someone listening today. Maybe you've had thoughts like that. Maybe you feel alone. You feel cut off. Uh, You even thought of of harming yourself. What I love about this story is it starts with him immediately coming to Jesus. Jesus didn't have to go look for him. He didn't have to go tie him up. As soon as the demons saw Jesus arriving, they realized they need to go and have a conversation. They went straight down and he comes to Jesus. Jesus arrives, the demons recognize him, the man comes down to meet him. Um, And so, as it said there, I mean, came to meet him, I love that. And you'll know the story, the legion of demons begs to be cast into the pigs, poor pigs. Heard of pigs on the mountainside, legion of demons cast in, you know the story, the pigs go down, uh, they destroy themselves um, in the water because Jesus gave them permission. Verse 13, he gave them permission and the impure spirits came out and went down into the pigs. Pigs go nuts. They drown themselves. The herdsmen panic. They run back to the town. Uh, The townsfolk find out. They come out to find out what has happened. And in verse 15, when they came to Jesus, they saw the man who had impure spirits or possessed by the legion of demons sitting there, dressed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Their, Their minds must have been completely blown and there's no denying what's happened here they've struggled with this problem for years and years and years and here's the evidence of the solution sitting in front of them for all to see the whole town to see this man who's been a problem for ages dressed clothed in his right mind and sitting and probably smiling back at them for the first time one encounter one true encounter with jesus is all it takes and the town is rid of its problem and then the man um, sorry, not the man, but the, 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 the man is not just rid of a single problem, but he's rid of a thousand problems. The pigs are a little less fortunate, as you know. So all it took was Jesus and his amazing presence and his authority. Um, and we carry some of his presence and we carry his authority with us today. Uh, are you carrying fear? 
from evil? Are you carrying fear from harm? Or are you carrying faith and trust and hope in Jesus today? Are you carrying self-doubt or a poor self-esteem or even thoughts of self-harm? Can I say, turn to Jesus, come to Jesus, get a bit of him. And one encounter with him can transform your life completely. Put your hope, hope in Jesus this morning. We should ask ourselves again at this point, is what I'm carrying worth catching today? Quickly, the, the second amazing miracle in this chapter of Mark chapter 5 uh, starts in verse 21, when Jesus again had crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake. A large crowd had gathered there around him, and one of the synagogue leaders named Jairus came, and when he saw Jesus, he fell down at his feet, and he pleased, pleaded earnestly with him, my little daughter is dying, please come and put your hands on her, that she would be healed and she would live. And so Jesus went with him, and a large crowd followed and pressed around him. Jairus went a little against the grain here. He's a synagogue leader. If you think of the time, synagogue leaders weren't really known for being greatly supportive of Jesus. Uh, he fell at Jesus' feet. He's pleading with Jesus to come and save his dying daughter. He must have held some hope in his heart that this Jesus could actually help him. Um, and his little one's in the process of dying. So this is probably like a super time sensitive thing for Jairus. Firstly, Lord, will you come with me? And secondly, Lord, will you come with me? now because she's dying um, and I'm wondering as I was reading this again this week like how often are our prayers uh, time sensitive when it comes to physical time and the physical nature and this physical world that we live in how much time pressure do we place on our prayers towards God and towards heaven when we know Jesus operates in a different time frame uh, and his ways are are different to ours so you know the story, Jesus went with him and this large crowd is following along. And in this large crowd, there's one particular woman. She's had a problem with an issue of blood for, for 12 long years. Um, and it says actually in verse 26, she had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors. It must have cost her a whole lot of money as well. And she had spent all that she had um, on medicine and on medical care, just as many are doing right now in this pandemic. Yet instead of getting better, she seemed only to get worse. Maybe that's you today. I don't know. Maybe you've been trusting God for a healing or for a miracle or for a breakthrough of some kind. Maybe you've been in the care of many doctors or many counselors um, and you feel like you've tried everything and nothing seems to be working out. And you're anxious, maybe even around this disease that's around us right now and you, you don't know what else to do to keep your family and your loved ones safe. This lady can think of only one more thing. In verse 28 it says, because she thought and this is amazing for me. If I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped. And she felt in her body that she'd been freed from all her suffering. Um, wow. Come on, church. Wow. If I can just touch his clothing, I know I'll be healed. And in that moment, immediately, she's healed. That's hope. That is faith. Wow. And you can read the story um, a little further on or, or later there in, in Mark chapter 5. But Jesus notices the power has gone out of him. He says to his disciples, man, I can feel someone touched me. The disciples of Master, there's people all around you. They're bumping into us all the time. It's like the Black Friday sale at Gateway. S people are touching you. No, no, no. Someone touched me. And he looks around and he waits for the answer. And eventually we know the lady came forward trembling with fear and she explained everything to him. And in verse 34, he turns to her beautifully and says, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. I love that line. Your faith has healed you. Thinking of Donnie's preach again from last week. Go take a listen again. Your faith, your faith has healed you. Jesus was a carrier, clearly a carrier of great hope, a carrier of, of healing. In fact, he was so contagious that just a mere touch on the hem of his garment 
was enough to cure a problem that uh, a lady had been seeking help for for so, so many years. It was always certainly worth, and it always is certainly worth catching what Jesus has for us to catch. Amen. Certainly worth catching all of him and all of his precious Holy Spirit again, uh, refreshing within us today. Is what you're carrying worth catching, church? Come on, let's go uh, to point number three quickly. So Jesus now is going to heal Jairus' daughter. In fact, he's going to raise Jairus' daughter uh, from the dead. And notice this. I think hope and faith have been honored for this dear lady. The enemy yet takes this moment to immediately destroy Jairus's hope. Maybe that's you. Maybe you felt like, oh Lord, how come you seem to answer that person's prayers? Or how come you seem to heal this person and yet not my family member or not me? And verse 35, while Jesus was still speaking, he was still busy speaking to the woman, some people came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader, and said, your daughter is dead. Why bother the teacher anymore? Notice the unfairness of that situation and maybe you're feeling like you've been treated a bit unfairly recently as well. Jairus has humbled himself as a synagogue leader and he's gone to ask Jesus for help. He's in fact he's pled for Jesus's help. His daughter's situation we know is super time sensitive. Her, His prayers and his pleas of yes they've finally been answered. There's hope Jesus is on the way. He's coming and he didn't ask for this other distraction along the way. Some other person that suffered for a long long time with a condition and for Jesus to stop and find out who's touched him and all the crowds and this conversation to happen and Lord can we please just go because I told you my daughter needs help she really really needs your help now but at the same time wow that's amazing someone else has just been healed my hope is restored again my faith is confirmed this is Jesus he's still healing people we're on our way to go and see my daughter and while he's hearing all of this Bam, the words of the enemy come just like that. Your daughter is dead. Why bother the teacher anymore? Man, that's heartbreaking, heartbreaking news. Notice how, notice how infectious your words are. Is what you're carrying worth catching? I'm sure the Okies from Jairus' household were meaning really, really well when they came to share the truth with him. But they destroy all of his hope in that very moment. Your daughter is dead. Time to give up, brother. Let's go. Shame. Let's not trouble the teacher any longer. Those words are, are so, so final. They're actually so infectious. Uh, they're so hope destroying. Like your words and my words. Sometimes through a mask, they're a little more difficult to hear. But they're still infectious. They still carry or destroy hope every time we open our mouths to speak so are we speaking hope are we saying what we see around us or the hope of what we want to see because faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of what we don't yet see so how many of you know that uh, jesus always has the final final say and fortunately for jairus and for us he's right there with him and right there with you and with me today and when the bad news lands for Jairus in his household uh, he immediately offers Jairus an equally infectious alternative through his words uh, in verse 36 turning to him and overhearing what they had just said Jesus told him told Jairus don't be afraid only believe it's your call Jairus it's your call this morning, Christian. Whose report are you going to choose to believe? The people who just came with the sad reality that she's dead or a savior who says nothing is as it seems and nothing is hopeless. And no, bad, no matter how bad or how final your situation seems right now or looks right now, nothing is over until I say so. I'm your king, Jesus. Jairus and you and I have a choice today. Jesus speaks over all 
the negative reports bombarding you and I today. Uh, perhaps very true reports, perhaps even reports of death, and says, do not be afraid, only believe. And in verse 38, when they came on the home of the synagogue leader, I love this, Jesus saw a commotion of people crowding and wailing loudly, crying and wailing loudly. He went in and he said to them, why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him. And after he put them all out, he took the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him and he went in to where the child was. He took her by the hand and he said to her, Talitha kum, which means little girl, I say to you, get up. And immediately the girl stood up and began to walk around. She was 12 years old. And at this, they were completely astonished. How precious is that, man? Wow. Can you imagine the commotion? outside in the community. I mean, Jesus even tells them, please keep this quiet. Don't tell anyone. I don't know how you do that. The community's witnessed the wailing, the crying, the negative news that have gone out. Jairus is a prominent synagogue leader. He was a very public figure. There's been a death in his home and suddenly the person who was supposedly dead is now walking around. Uh, the chatter and this laughter at this crazy person who'd given false hope. Um, we know that they laughed at Jesus. Um, when he said she's not dead, she's just sleeping. And, um, you know, maybe you and I in that same situation would have also laughed at a crazy person coming in to tell us the child who we'd been sitting with for the last hour in her dead form um, is actually just sleeping. Um, and yeah, they probably thought this crazy person is just trying to bring some kind of false hope to the family. I might have actually felt or done the same. We're quick to judge them, but Jesus... Um, comes in, turns the situation around through, again, just two or three small words, and bam, hope is restored, uh, even beyond death. And I know that's a stretch for a lot of us this morning, but even beyond death, which seems so final to all of us, Jesus says, if you're willing to believe, if you'll trust in me, there's hope. And so, I just really hope this morning that we'll put the truth of his word in our hearts. Um, we can not only believe for ourselves, but that we can also be just hugely infectious carriers of his hope to the world around us. We've called to be the good news and to share the good news and to shine his light and to share his truth with the communities around us when they when they need it most. And so my encouragement to you today, to all of us today, is we are all carriers. Let what we're carrying be worth catching uh, so that the world around you doesn't need to maintain that spiritual social distance uh, from you. And we, we kicked off a little earlier in 1 Thessalonians, um, but another verse in that same chapter, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, Paul is writing to the church there and says, and the word of the Lord is ringing out from you people to everyone everywhere and beyond Macedonia and whatever that is. But for wherever we go, we find people telling us about your faith in God. We don't need to tell them about your faith in God. No. Wow. These Thessalonians really caught it. They spread it. It was contagious. Paul says, the people there tell us about your amazing faith in God. And can we do that this week? I know we can't have a lot of physical contact with the communities and the neighbors and the colleagues and that around us, but there are people that you're interfacing with digitally and engaging with digitally and your own family under your own roof. That they truly would say at the end of this week, wow, you will not believe the hope and the belief and the faith and the trust that these guys have in their God. There's something there that just attracts me. I don't know what it is. There's something so real and so true. And no matter how bleak their situation seems, their God just seems to come through for them. Can we pray into that now? Um, as we end off this morning, Lord Jesus, thank you so much for the truth of your word. Just so many examples, Lord, of how you demonstrated and showed repeatedly that you are trustworthy God, that you're a faithful God, uh, that it is worthwhile hoping in you against 
jump all odds, Lord, uh, whether you, you're full of a thousand demons, whether you've been struggling with an unanswered prayer for more than a decade, whether you're uh, in a situation where a loved one has even passed away, Lord, you say, Jesus, unless I've spoken the final word, there is still hope. And Lord, this morning I declare that hope, Lord, uh, into the lives of every person on this uh, live link this morning, Lord Jesus, every home and every family that will watch this, whether it's live now or at a later stage, Lord Jesus, your hope over us, Lord Jesus, not just for our own sake, not just for the deliverance of our own homes and our own families, Lord Jesus, but for the sake of being able to spread your word, be able to shine your light, being able to show your good news to those around us and to be part of an ever expanding kingdom of God um, as you building your church, Lord Jesus, and as we part of that journey. Man, it is such a privilege, Lord, to be part of what we you are doing, part of what you are building. Uh, Lord Jesus, we love you so much. Much, Lord, we know that there's so many reasons right now that the world would send our way to say situations are hopeless, uh, that there's no reason to hang on to to hope or to bother the teacher anymore. Lord, we, we just bring our prayers before you, bring our requests before you with love in our hearts, Lord, and with joy in our hearts, Lord, knowing that you're a God who answers prayer. You're a faithful, faithful Savior. Father God, you're a faithful Father. We love you so much this morning, and I just say thank you for breathing new hope into our lives and our homes and our families and our situations today and for the week and the weeks and months and years that lie ahead for the work that you've got in store for us. In Jesus' name, I pray with much thanksgiving in our hearts. Everyone said, Amen all over Durban this morning. Have a wonderful, wonderful Sunday. Uh, enjoy your time together. And uh, yeah, maintain that safe distance uh, while we still have to. Really look forward to reconnecting with everyone once we're beyond this time. And uh, if you do need specific prayer, if you're struggling with anything, please reach out to the leadership team. We would love to make contact with you and pray with you specifically, uh, telephonically, um, or even over Zoom or something like that. Uh, we'd love to stay in touch, even though we can't physically be together. Have a great day. Keep smiling. Bye for now.